Hello guys, Bingo Cat here, and today we're going to be looking at Windows 98 versus Windows 10 once again. This is my second video in my Windows 98 versus Windows 10 video. So today we're going to be looking at all the applications that come with Windows 98 and Windows 10 and sort of comparing them against each other. So what applications do Windows 98 and Windows 10 have? Keep watching to find out. I'm going to take a look at Windows 98 programs. So let's go to programs, then accessories. And so what's under communication? Internet connection wizard. So this would, I guess, be used for if you want to connect to the internet. Like if you want to, s I think this is mainly to be used during the dial up days or early broadband days. That's when about the time Windows 98 was released. And so my internet connection should already be set up, but um, let's just click next and see what happens. I connect through a LAN, and next, no, I don't want an email account. Oh, that was actually easy. Okay, let's go to the next program. Let's go under entertainment. Now, Windows 98, first of all, I'm sorry to get off track, but it does come with games. It comes with Free Soul Hearts Minesweeper Solitaire. And so, Minesweeper is actually an interesting game. I think the entire goal of Minesweeper was to get people used to the idea of a mouse. Minesweeper is almost close to impossible to play, but it definitely does get you clicking around with a mouse. Then Solitaire has been a staple of Windows for a long time. So many people miss the removal of Solitaire in Windows 8 that they actually brought it back in Windows 10. Nevertheless, you now can download it from the Microsoft Store. Windows 98 comes with a CD player, which would eventually be sort of morphed with Windows Media Player, I believe, to become a DVD player. And then DVD playback got discontinued in Windows 10 for some reason, which I don't understand because DVDs are still relatively popular. My computer doesn't have a DVD drive, but a lot of people, as far as I know, especially older computers, still use DVDs. And so here's where you could also use a sound recorder. You could also find a quick link to the volume control under entertainment and you could also find a link to Windows Media Player. I believe the last version of Windows Media Player supported on Windows 98 is Windows Media Player 9 and this definitely looks like Windows Media Player 9. Alright, so under internet tools there's something here for a personal web server. I don't know if this was included with Windows 98, but let's just see what it does. It must have been. Welcome to Microsoft Personal Web Server 4.0. If you're setting up a website for your corporate work group or staging your personal website to be a, your host by your ISP, Microsoft Personal Web Server provides everything you need to go to... Uh, um, okay. Under System Tools, you have stuff like Disk Cleanup, Disk Defragmenter, which still exists today, by the way. Then you have Disk Converter, which sort of got merged into the Disk Management Utility into Windows 10. Drive Space. I'm guessing that tells you how much space you have left on your hard drive, and it does do that. You also have stuff like the maintenance wizard, which doesn't exist in Windows 10 as far as I'm aware of, so let's just see what it is. The maintenance wizard adjusts your computer for top-notch performance. Hmm. Setting up a regular maintenance schedule ensures that you get the most from your computer. So let's just see the custom maintenance settings. So maintenance schedule nights, defragment my disk. Scan my hard drive for errors, delete unnecessary files, and bam. Hey, sweet. Then also has stuff like resource meter, scan disk, um, system information, system monitor. Let's, let's look at the system information. So you guys can see I'm running Microsoft Windows 98 4.10.2 with a clean install IE 5.6 which I'm pretty sure I'm running IE6, but whatever. All right, so Windows 98 also included an address book for your context. Uh, basic calculator, uh, imaging, what is imaging? All right, so imaging for Windows from Global 360 is a document imaging software. And I still have no idea what that means. Document imaging is information technology category for systems capable of replicating documents commonly used in businesses. Windows 98, of course, includes Windows Paint. Hi. Windows 98 includes something called Synchronize. No idea what that is. To ensure that you have the most current data when working offline, you can have Windows Synchronize 
the data on your computer and the data on the network, so both are up to date. Hey, that actually sounds kind of useful. Windows 98 also has a basic word processor word pad, and so it also has your startup items here, and then Internet Explorer, of course, and so since Windows 98 was built on DOS, you can actually use Microsoft DOS. Windows 98 also included an Outlook Express email client, and then it also included Windows Explorer, obviously, Windows Media Player. It does not include Opera, but I have Opera on here because that is the most modern web browser Windows 98 8 can run. Mind you, this isn't the modern version of Opera. This was a version of Opera released back in mid-2010. Windows 10, on the other hand, comes with some similar programs built to the ones in Windows 98, but also a lot of different programs. So first things first, it comes with a 3D Builder, which you can use a 3D Builder to build 3G objects and have them shipped to your door. It sounds pretty neat to be honest, but be honest, I don't know if I'd actually buy any 3D objects that um, I created using 3D Builder, but I actually removed 3D Builder in my main Windows 10 PC. Look at this, this is a Windows logo in 3D Builder. Question is though, how much does it cost? Oh, if I were to have a 3D printer, which I might get for Christmas by the way, I could actually be able to 3D print this. Oh, that's not a bad price, it only costs $13.28. By the way, if you don't like 3D Builder, you can just right-click on most apps on here and click Uninstall. So moving on, Windows 10 also has an Alarms and Clock app, which is basically what you expect. Included here is also a calculator app, a calendar app, a camera app, and then it also includes Candy Crush Soda Saga for some reason. Now this isn't a Microsoft built game or anything like that. I think Candy Crush just paid Microsoft to include it in Windows 10. You also have an app on Windows 10 called Connect. And to be honest, I've never used this, so I don't know what it does. And so if you had a Miracast device, this would be able to use Miracast, but apparently I don't, which is kind of weird because I actually thought it did have Miracast support, but the computer probably knows better than me. Alright, here's something that I like in Windows 10. Windows 10 includes a contact support button. Well, in Windows 98, you had to rely on the help file if you didn't know how to do something, and I mean, Google it existed back in the days of Windows 98, but more than likely, people use something like altavista.com, which doesn't even exist anymore, by the way, that was brought up by Yahoo. Um, but search engines back in 1998 weren't that good, so you either had to rely on the help files or use a book or try and call Microsoft support. Now Windows 10 on the other hand, Windows 10 doesn't really have a great help file. All What they do for the most part is they have this little get started guide over here where it will tell you some basic stuff you can do in Windows 10. I mean it pretty much tells you, you know, most of the basic stuff that you can do like use the start menu how to get connected to the internet, how to use Microsoft Edge. If you're still not too clear about that, or you have a technical problem, you now have the option to contact Microsoft support directly from within Windows 10, and that's really nice. Actually, let's try this out. My computer is broken. Let's click Next. And let's see, I've told them my computer is broken. I'm using Windows. I need tech support. And so what will happen down here is there will be um, there will be forums on social.technetmicrosoft.com and then you can also have Microsoft call you immediately assuming their uh, call center is actually open. You can schedule a call with Microsoft and then you can do instant chat with Microsoft. Then you can go ahead and ask the community on answers.microsoft.com and honestly I like the contact support app. It really tells people basically where to go if you need support. Or you can be like me and just Google all your tech questions. Another thing I like in Windows 10 is that it comes with a feedback hub. So if you don't like something in Windows 10, or you do like something in Windows 10, you can submit feedback directly to Microsoft here. Windows 10, unlike Windows 98, comes with a built-in assistant called Cortana. Cortana is mainly a voice assistant but it's meant to be a smart voice assistant. The basic thing, first of all, that you can do is that you can use its search function, which can search your PC and search the web for information, and it can also collect information about you in real time, like your location history, your contacts, calendar details, browsing history, and the entire goal of Cortana is to make your device smarter. Like, instead of you Googling to see what your traffic is like on the way to your work, 
Cortana will just automatically tell you around the exact time you leave for work every day. Moving on, Windows 10 also includes links where you can get your copy of Microsoft Office if you want, of course, or money. And that also includes its own built-in music app called Groove Music. And Groove Music, it's pretty nice. It's basically Spotify of Windows 10, and it can also play all your OneDrive music. Windows 10 also includes its own built-in mail client, like Windows 98. And I'm not a huge fan of the built-in Windows 10 mail client because I feel like it's designed more for touchscreens. My computer isn't a touchscreen computer, so I don't use a Windows 10 mail client. I'm just one of those people that checks their mail in the browser, but so are 98% of other people, I'm pretty sure. Windows 10 also includes a built-in messaging app. And here we go, Microsoft Solitaire and Windows 10. You're introduced to a lot more varieties of Solitaire in Windows 10. You have your Klondike Solitaire, Spider Solitaire, Free Soul Solitaire. Let's say I was playing Klondike Solitaire, it gives you nice tutorials. And then, honestly, the graphics for look a heck of a lot better than Windows 98, but graphics aren't everything. And then this also includes something called Microsoft Wi-Fi, which it claims that can, you can access instant pay-as-you-go Wi-Fi access at many locations such as hotels or airports. This is definitely useful on a laptop computer, but definitely really super unnecessary on a desktop computer. Then you also include your Microsoft Money app, it's where if you want to do stuff like track stocks and things like that. Then it includes your fantastic uninstallable movies and TVs app. And Microsoft with the movies and TVs app, this is the replacement for Windows Media Player. The reason Windows Media Player hasn't seen an update in years is because this is the successor to Windows Media Player. Microsoft means for you to view all your movies in here, your local movies, um, movies on the web, things like that. Microsoft still left Windows Media Player in Windows 10. Mind you, it's really, really, really not that new anymore, but it is still there if you want to use that. You also have a news app in Windows 10, and it's also pretty nice. So Windows 10 also has, like I mentioned before, built-in access to OneDrive, and then also it has OneNote, which is just a notes-taking app. OneNote, it's... I don't use OneNote, but it is one of the better note-taking apps in my personal opinion. And then this also includes paid Wi-Fi and cellular, which is just if you want to pay for your Wi-Fi at places that offer pay Wi-Fi or pay for your cellular data. And then this also includes a People app, which is basically just the address book from Windows 98. And this also includes a Phone app, which is kind of interesting because this is a desktop PC. It doesn't have a phone number. So what I can do though is sign into a calling app or service and then check back here after calling. But once again, if you don't use a phone app, you can just uninstall it. This also includes something called Phone Companion, which is actually compatible with Windows, Android, and iPhone or iPad. But unfortunately, you also have to use Cortana with it. If you have Cortana disabled like I do on my main PC, this won't work. The main goal with Phone Companion is that you can sync your photos, music, and more. Windows 10 also includes its own Photos app. I actually do kind of like the Photos app. I'm not a huge fan of the interface per se, but it's sort of a mix between Windows Photo Viewer and Photo Gallery from Windows Live Essentials. Windows 10 also includes a Skype preview app. Windows 10 also includes sports, also includes sticky notes, and then Windows 10 also includes something called the Windows 10 Store. And the entire goal with the Windows 10 Store is for the consumer to have one place where they can download all the apps you need with Windows 10. That's the idea anyways. Windows 10 also includes an app called Sway, and Sway, for those of you guys who don't know, which is probably most of you, Sway is an app where you can make presentations. Windows 10 also has a voice recorder. Windows 10 also includes Twitter for some reason built in. Twitter probably paid Windows 10 to do that. And then last but not least you have your weather app which gives you weather information and your Xbox app which is for games. So that was all of the new interesting apps that are in Windows 10. Windows 10 also includes programs that you might have found in previous versions of Windows. Like it still has Internet Explorer. It has a math input panel which is useful for if you want to input math. It includes Notepad, Paint. It also includes Quick Assist, which I didn't see in Windows 98, but all Quick Assist is, is if you want to help your friend, and let's say your friend lives like three hours away from you, you both just open up Quick Assist on your computer, and you can will be able to connect to your friend's computer through there and walk him or her through 
troubleshooting steps. Something that Windows 10 has I like is the snipping tool introduced in Windows Vista. It's a screenshot program. Windows 10 also includes something called the steps recorder, which I've never used, but it's useful if you want to make a quick little how-to guide. You just press start record and then you click on stuff you want to do in the computer. And the computer will record the steps for you and you can edit the captions afterwards. Also, Windows 10 includes WordPad like Windows 98. It also includes a, something called the Windows XPS Viewer. And for those of you who don't know, which is once again probably most of you, XPS was created to be as a competitor to PDF, but as far as I can tell, it never really took off. But alas, don't worry, Windows 10 also has built-in ability to open PDFs. Alright, under Windows Administrative Tool, these are all the administrative tools that you can access on your computer, like Component Services, Computer Management. Let's take a look at System Information. It's I would say a little bit more detailed than Windows 98. It says I'm running Windows 10 Pro with an Intel Core i7 processor on VMware. I didn't see this in Windows 98, but Windows 10 includes something called Windows ESA of Access, where if you're having trouble using your computer for whatever reason or you need accessibility tools, they should all be listed around here. Windows 10 also includes something called Windows PowerShell, which was sort of built to be the replacement to the command from. And it's definitely became increasingly more powerful and more popular over the years. I still see a lot of people using the command prompt, but PowerShell, man, PowerShell is amazing. And then of course, it includes the Windows system folder where you can access the command prompt, um, the control panel, default programs, where you can choose your default program, the devices list, file explorer, the run prompt, the task manager, this PC, and Windows 10, unlike Windows 98, comes with a built-in antivirus. All right, guys, that was the comparison of the various apps and programs of Windows 98 versus Windows 10. Make sure to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.